Alleluia. 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 Praise God. It's going to ring forever, folks. Uh, Hosanna means the Lord saves, Lord save us. And Alleluia means the Lord has saved us. Hallelujah. He's coming in the clouds with power and great glory. Could be today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Praise God. All right, now, as we, uh, I, I want to take a moment. I, I felt very strongly directed to uh, Psalm 2 today uh, to talk about, you know, what's going on in the world. We prayed over Russia, and uh, having prayed over Russia this morning, uh, with the heat of the Holy Spirit blanketing that nation with the heat of the gospel, of the anointing of Christ, the blessing of the Lord, to open the eyes of the blind, open the ears of the deaf, to bring understanding to the heart, conversion to the soul, and a complete and utter healing to those that hunger and thirst for the Lord. I was very, very strongly directed to Psalm 2 this morning. I, want you, I just want you to listen to this because it kind of declares what the headlines are in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, Okay, let's see here, we'll multi-camera shoot, you know. <laughs> All right, why do the heathen, uh, why do the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Really? Really, you're going to stand up and do that in the face of God? All right. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, laugh hilariously. Uh, the Lord shall hold them in derision, in hilarity, and uh, he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. The Lord is not pleased with nations, uh, you know, trying to manipulate and force others into their way of thinking, especially when it's godless, Okay. And says here, um, he who sits in the heaven shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision, and then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. I will set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, the Lord says. And I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son today, I have begotten you. Ask of me, I will give you the nations, the heathen for your inheritance and the ends of the earth, the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. So we take possession in Jesus' name, amen. We don't have to listen to what the prophetic pundits say. We don't have to listen to what the politicians say. We take authority in Jesus' name, hallelujah. He said he would... He would uh, uh, you shall uh, break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, be wise, O ye kings. Check out Nahum 1.9. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. You know what that word kiss the son is? It's the word worship. When Jesus said the day is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Lord in spirit and truth. That means to kiss the Son. When you kiss the presence of Jesus in communion, you're kissing the Son. And, and um, uh, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. Well, you know what? Uh, his anger is only measured by our ineptness to pay attention to him. He's not really angry. It's that, you're, uh, that, that he is going to resist what is evil and he's going to give grace to the humble. Those that stand up against him, he doesn't have to do anything. They'll fall on their own accord, you know. His, his anger is a, almost a merciful anger. He lets them fall so that if they're broken, they can call on his name. Kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. But when his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Notice that? When his wrath is even kindled a little tiny bit, there's a special blessing to all those who put their trust in him. Be bold, believe. Amen. Be bold, believe network. Praise God. All right. Lord, we ask you to bless this bread to be your body. We do this to remember you, the body of Christ broken for you. Hallelujah.
Lord, we ask you to bless this wine to be your blood. We do this to remember you, the blood of Jesus shed for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, in the bread, I saw uh, bread on the Atlantic Ocean. I saw bread on the Atlantic Ocean. And um, there used to be a preacher I used to listen to in Baltimore, R.W. Schambach. He said, uh, when you cast your bread on the water, he returns it to you, French toast. That means when you have communion, the bread becomes the body of Christ. The bread becomes something that you don't know what it is, but it becomes his flesh. He calls it his flesh, so we do too. All right, so when we when we dine with the Lord, we dine upon him. When we dine upon him, we also drink him in. We drink in mm, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We're no longer bound by those things the rest of the world are bound by. We're not bound by narrow vision. We're not bound by, by evil intentions. We're not we're not bound by those things that resist God. We're actually broken. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. And when we dine upon him, we're feeding on eternal life and we're drinking in his love forever and ever. He says, those of you that eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have eternal life and I'll raise you up on the last day. I will be in you and you will be in me. So the communion means to be one with the Lord. Amen. So that kind of meal, it's the best meal in the world. All right. So, Lord, we do pray for your people today. We pray for the um, body of believers around the world, no matter what their uh, persuasion is, Roman Catholic, Coptic, Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Coptic. Lord, for all the Lutherans, the Evangelicals, the Anglicans, the Lutherans, the Methodists, the Presbyterians. Lord, we pray for all your people everywhere today and ask your anointing and your blessing to come upon us in such a way that we find ourselves in communion with you, that we as the church with one voice can say the final prayer of Revelation twenty two twenty. even so, come Lord Jesus. Are you looking for his appearing? Blessed are you if you are, because as you look for him, hallelujah, he raises you up into heavenly places with him, above all principalities and powers and all wickedness in high places. Praise God. You're blessed. Now, go be a blessing. Amen. Ciao, baby. We'll see you tomorrow.